is just a brief history of angioplasty and why I'm presenting it is we are entering the 40th, we are finishing the 40th year of angioplasty since the first paper was presented in 1979 when I was in my third MBBS. Uh, when we were in college and medical college, we had no clue by the way, I had no clue that some people were using catheters even to go into the heart. Uh, we had very stalwart textbooks here. And in past, the only reason catheter was put was to visualize arteries in relation to doing coronary bypass surgery. Charles' daughter, and I've been fortunate to meet many of these people. Charles' daughter's idea was to treat an artery without a scalpel. And then Andreas Gernzig's dream was to treat vascular disease with a catheter in a conscious alert patient. And it was between daughter and Gernzig, the entire area of intervention, cardiology, cardiovascular, even interventional radiology has come. This is uh, Andreas Gernzig and this is his table where he used to make these catheters through some uh, people's help. In July 79, exactly 40 years and uh, 5 months ago, this article came, Non-Operative Dilatation of Coronary Artery Stenosis. It was a landmark article. I had no clue about this article. I was uh, in my final MBBS in Ahmedabad VS Hospital. And the history actually went preceding by Dr. Sohn. Sohn started the first brachial artery. So if you see and talk about radial access, much before that, brachial access was started by Sohn's in 1958. There are two landmark events that happened. Sohn started doing angiography in 1958 in Cleveland, and I was born in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania in 1958. So that was the other landmark event. And then Judkins did the femoral access in uh, 70s and started using it routinely in 80s. Grunzig, who was in Switzerland, started doing first course and uh, it was in August 78, 28 cardiologists, one third the people who are here right now attended this method and most of them were just laughing and enjoying. Second course in 79 was attended by 90 participants, third course in 1980, 170 participants, these are global courses. Hardly people used to come. 81, the first course in Atlanta, he was taken away by uh, Emory University in Atlanta. Uh, they invested and brought him there, was held. 85, 86 was his fifth course. This is me with a mustache attending. Total attendees were about 200. This year, Milan Bay presented a case in TCT 2019, US most foremost course, 10,000 attendees plus. So you can imagine, these were the pioneering years. Same year, another gentleman, Jeffrey Hartzler, started doing acute MI angioplasty. He did recorded case conference, again I attended in 1986, kind of looking at it. And uh, the origin started in Charles' daughter, 1969, followed by Hans Wallsten, who had this wall stent, expanding stents, Julio Palmas, they started in his garage. So you can imagine this pioneer starting in garage. Who else do you remember started in garage? And? Absolutely. So pioneer started in garage. I didn't start in garage, but I started in Ahmedabad. So he started showing and in that these stands, these were biliary stands. And he joined with another doctor cardiologist, Richard Schartz. I was again fortunate to meet with them, spent quite a few time here and there with them, much younger in my age. Probably they don't even remember me. And this is a guy, Philip Romano. Anybody knows who is he? Anybody guess? Okay. So when they had these stands, they approach investors to invest to form a stand company. Okay. This is 1980s. I already was in USA. I was doing my residency in medicine. And the first patent in 85, I was in my fellowship in cardiology. 
already the biliary stents were used in iliac arteries i started using them and these two guys wanted to commercialize so and then richard stars while sitting in a airplane so that like there are these trucks and he then approached this guy romanos what is this macaroni grill he used to go and have macaroni there and food there so he said look i want to start this company nobody is helping me these guys are always smarter the restaurant people so romano invested in the company and the rest is history the company did very well and johnson and johnson bought it even in those days in hundreds of million of dollar so always the history records two doctors and a macaroni owner macaroni shop so moral of the story is if you want to get rich go in some another industry and then while sitting on a airplane he saw these trolleys which were linked and that is how the flexible stands came these were the original stand and the flexible stand so again from there wall stand in toulouse france and then in lausanne started treating first in men coronary stenting and in 1905 ulrich sigward partner with medivan company and did the first coronary stent implantation after animal testing on april 86 in a dissection of lrd and this is the team he is not remembered as much as andreas ganzig but i think he was also a pioneering person i have seen him met him this is his pioneering slide look at how doctors perceive that in 1990 esc had a statement criticizing him 1990 not too far ago that you should be ashamed of yourself it is unethical to put metal in human coronaries and guarantee some of you yourself have metals in your coronaries and then better and better stands came better and better trials new devices atherectomy rotabletters cutting balloons came and then first generation stents came cipher texas johnson and johnson boston scientific sirolimus drug paclitaxel drug this is in south america uh, where uh, dr souza patrick siraya some of them were there putting the first drug coated sirolimus stent mother teresa had stand put by turstein in san diego cardiologist so everybody now knows about stand then second generation stands came third generation fourth generation fifth generation we are already using our fourth generation stands absorbable stands came i had lot of lectures on that eventually and i truly believe prematurely they were withdrawn because of some scaffold clots which i believe was partly technic related hopefully they'll come back i think two three companies are in the pipeline coming with, with the absorbable stents and my final take home slides are where are we now amazing amazing history coronary stents absorbable stents drug coated balloons calcified arteries we open directional atherectomy rotabletters lasers distal protection bifurcation osteal left main you'll hear about this chronic occlusion saphenous vein acute mi i mean acute mi in gujarat even for financial reason not to do primary intervention is unethical uh, any good center can do a primary angioplasty in 70 80000 rupees with a basic inexpensive stent and if you give streptokinase and manage this patient medically with a persistent block with events it is criminal this is one area no trial have shown medicine is as good or better forget it medicine is inferior no trials hybrid intervention out of hospital cardiac arrest intervention is coming cardiogenic stock peripheral interventions multiple body parts congenital heart disease intervention atrial septal vsd pds valvular intervention amazing you'll be seeing lot of lectures other interventions 
almost innumerable left atrial appendage alcohol septal ablation melon bite has, has done the highest in the country valvular leaks stem cell deliveries balloon angioplasties in pulmonary arteries endovascular treatments so this lecture is actually a tribute to one person me and most of my colleagues have looked at andreas grunzig in 40th year of angioplasty 1979 2020 he died prematurely he was so brave he used to fly his own airplane and he died with his family very premature age and he is i believe mentor to all cardiologists in the world myself alive as well as posthumously so i would like to end this lecture with the ovation to him a giant who went through everything thank you very much everybody